Hi, this is the Tropical Tippet for Wednesday, September 6th. We're squarely in the peak of the hurricane season this week, and true to form, we have a storm to track. This is Tropical Storm Lee, formed a couple of days ago over the central Atlantic. It's moving west-northwestward, expected to pass north of the northeastern Caribbean islands, but possibly close enough to graze them with some weather impacts this weekend. So we'll be keeping an eye on that and its long-term future as well, as it could lumber across the western Atlantic for 10 days plus, potentially as a strong hurricane, so we'll be watching Lee for some time. This is a close-up satellite loop of Lee during the daytime hours today. You'll see tight wrapping in the center as this gets organized. Maximum winds are currently at 70 miles per hour, estimated by the National Hurricane Center, and you'll see this nice curved banding look to it. Uh, not yet a hurricane, but probably will become one either later today or tonight. Conditions are generally favorable. There is a touch of northeasterly wind shear at the moment, especially in the middle layers of the troposphere, and that's been holding Lee back from explosive intensification over the next, over the last day or so. But conditions are expected to improve, and they're already pretty good. If we look at the water vapor satellite loop here, the RGB product, you see all these teal feathery, feathery cirrus spreading out radially from Lee toward the west, toward the north, toward the northeast. This is very healthy looking upper level outflow. This is also an indication that there's generally not a lot of shear. I mentioned there's some out of the northeast, but that will quickly fade over the next 24 hours as this moves toward the northeastern Caribbean islands. And there's really not a big trough out here to the west to get in its way. The nearest trough is way off the edge of your screen. And during the peak of the hurricane season, if you take the shear away, these things are likely to fly. This is the GFS model showing the upper level flow. Here's where Lee is right now. And like I said, in, in the orange colors here, the nearest tut cell or any kind of upper level trough is way off on the corner of your screen, well north of the Caribbean and well to the west of Lee. So this is likely to have a favorable environment over the next couple of days as it moves west northwestward. And you can see this big ballooning area of blue as the hurricane pushes out upper level outflow all around it and forms this bubble. And if this bubble is not getting distorted by any big upper level trough to the northwest, it, does, it means there's not a lot of shear here. So conditions generally favorable, very warm ocean, high ocean heat content, low shear, and not a lot of dry air either. You can see on the water vapor loop that green colors extend well away from the hurricane, green and blue colors indicating that there's not a lot of black encroaching on the storm, not a lot of dry air getting in toward the core right now, and that will likely remain true for the next several days. Accordingly, the model guidance is very bullish on Lee, making it a strong major hurricane as it passes north of the northeastern Caribbean. This is the HAFS A model for five days out, which is as far as the run goes, showing a very strong hurricane, category five intensity, in fact, on this particular model. HAFS B, similar story, very strong hurricane north of Puerto Rico. This will be worth keeping an eye on just in case the southern part of the wind field clips the northeastern Caribbean. There is still a chance that we do get tropical storm conditions if Lee tracks close enough to the islands. But we're going to talk about here how we're not too concerned about a shift in the track directly over the northeastern Caribbean islands as we've had a very consistent signal from modeling and the steering pattern is fairly straightforward at least during the first few days here. This is the European model showing the 500 millibar mid-level steering chart uh, showing where Lee is right now. The subtropical ridge extending off of Africa to the north of the hurricane is a, a typical steering feature here. You'll see this ridge axis and there's a easterly winds on the south side ushering the storm toward the west-northwest and hurricanes tend to gain latitude especially as they get stronger and so due westward tracks generally only happen if you have an anomalously strong ridge to the north of the hurricane but we don't have that in this case. You'll see there's a little bit of an upper level low due north of the hurricane in the subtropical Atlantic. That's kind of eroding the strength of this ridge overall. You can see it's a little squished here and it's not uh, overtly strong. So we expect Lee to easily gain latitude as it comes west and model guidance has unanimously expected a track north of the islands for the last few days and that has been holding serve every run we've seen so far. Here's an example. This is the European ensemble of 51 members showing the cloud of possible locations of Lee on Saturday evening. Each red number here is a possible location of Lee in the ensemble. And you can see the cloud here comfortably north of the islands. Again, possibly close enough if it's on the southern side of this cloud to bring tropical storm force conditions to some of the most northern islands 
of uh, the leewards. Uh, but the GFS Ensemble, also similar here, again, comfortably north of the islands in most cases, with the potential for a graze of the south side in the most southerly of cases. The Hurricane Center forecast follows suit here with this west-northwestward track. And this is the probability envelope of tropical storm force winds that would be about 40 miles per hour or stronger. You can see the yellow color here. That's at about 30%. That just grazes and Gia on this forecast and less than 30% odds over the rest of the Leeward Islands, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. So you can see there's a chance here that the, the storm passes far enough south that some impacts do occur. Uh, but at the moment, uh, the main track and the core of the hurricane expected to be well north. And uh, that's been the case every forecast we've had so far. No reason to really think that would change, but we are talking about this weekend. It's still three, four days out. Something to keep an eye on just in case we see a bit of a shift. Uh, better safe than sorry, so keep an eye on this in case you need to make preparations. Let's switch over to the big view of North America now. This is Lee over the southwestern Atlantic. Here's Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, the Bahamas, Florida, just to get you oriented. And we mentioned that the first few days here of Lee's forecast, up to about this point, this weekend on Sunday, north of the Lesser Antilles, that's a pretty stable forecast right now, hasn't been moving around a lot, seems to have pretty high confidence. Uh, but beyond that, uncertainty really balloons, as we will be tracking Lee for quite some time. It's a long track hurricane, and whenever we're watching these coming out of the east all the way across the ocean like this, it's always a question of when is it going to turn, where is it going to turn, and uh, will it impact land areas farther west, like the Bahamas, like Florida, like Cuba, the Gulf of Mexico. The good news is we can rule some things out in all likelihood, given the pattern that we're going into. This is the GFS 500 millibar chart showing you uh, 500 millibar height contours in black and the anomaly in coloring kind of helps highlight anomalous ridges and troughs. For example, here's a, a blue shaded trough over the southeastern US in four days on early Sunday morning. And uh, this is uh, well established on most model runs. And you can see that it kind of sets the edge of this ridge to the north of Lee near Bermuda. And uh, the idea here is that eventually Lee will probably turn around the edge of this ridge, especially if there's troughing over the eastern US like this. Now, of course, this trough could exit. Uh, but if we look to the desert southwest, there's a ridge here. And on this uh, model and on every model run that I've seen, it uh, ends up shrinking away into the eastern Pacific by the time we get out to day six, day seven. So what you'll see is this ridge shrinks away and we have an opening up of the subtropical jet across the southern US on every single one of these model runs. And there's really not a lot of a ridge extension toward the east coast. And so there's not a lot to bring Lee due west for very long. And so although it's passing north of the Caribbean and sometimes hurricanes do continue into the Bahamas, this doesn't look like one of those times because we have background westerly flow quite far south, even across the Gulf Coast of the US and the subtropical ridge axis or the, the near equatorial ridge axis is well to the south over the Caribbean and the Southern Gulf. So this is just not a pattern that would usher Lee all the way over into Florida and the Bahamas. Instead, what we expect is that with this subtropical ridge to its north, uh, we're going to see it turn around its periphery toward the north at some point. Of course, the question is where and when, and this will depend on some complicated stuff going on in the jet stream to the north of Lee. If we go forward, we're now at seven days out, and you'll see there's some complicated traffic going on. Again, we have the subtropical jet to the west of the hurricane, and then we have a bit of an amplified pattern with a trough over western Canada, a ridge over Hudson Bay, and then a sharp trough perhaps digging into New England, and then another ridge over Nova Scotia and Newfoundland. And this is sufficiently detailed in high amplitude that it is difficult to predict, especially a week in advance. So if I show you the last couple of model runs, you'll see that it's looked quite different on every run. There's been a lot of shifting around of these steering features that I just highlighted, not a lot of confidence and certainty in the position and timing of those features and of where Lee will be and exactly when and how quickly it's turning toward the north. But one thing we're generally going to be watching for is, you know, perhaps Bermuda will be in the, the path here of a turn toward the north. And then just how far west this goes and uh, whether it turns sharply or continues moving north for a while. Uh, one thing to potentially watch here is, you know, when you have the subtropical jet over the southern U.S. like this, 
uh, there is a potential for you know this ridge to stay strong uh, south of Atlantic Canada and if it stays here in an amplified way we could see a track that's due north for just long enough that it ends up moving into northeastern North America so southeast Canada you know maybe in some rare circumstances even New England possibly in the longer range but there's just no way to know uh, the likelihood of that right now given the small scale steering features that we're trying to predict seven eight nine ten days in advance this is the european model out to nine days showing again pretty complicated situation a small upper low north of maine and then a cutoff low over the great plains of the u.s these are not features that are going to be easily predicted uh, this far in advance so we'll be watching a hurricane turning north and a strong one but exactly where no one can tell you that right now this is the European ensemble showing the cloud of possible positions of Lee north of the Caribbean on Sunday morning and you'll see how quickly the uncertainty balloons here you'll note how tight this cluster of red numbers is and we have confidence that it will be in that general spot uh, but when we go into next week you'll see it continue to grow and spread out and what you'll notice right away is we have a grouping of members that turn to the north rather quickly. They get north of Bermuda's latitude uh, by eight or nine days, but some are still down uh, near the, the Turks and Caicos and southeastern Bahamas in the most extreme case, uh, moving west for just a little bit longer before turning. And yes, it's worth mentioning that you know we will have to keep an eye on the, the Bahamas and Turks and Caicos just in case they have been on the edge of the the cloud of possible tracks in these ensembles for the last few days so in the extreme case we may have to watch to see if we see a shift that direction but right now the bulk of the members turn away from the bahamas and move up just west of bermuda but you can see the speeds vary a whole lot uh, but the issue here is that some of these fast ones they actually get up into canada pretty quick so they don't stay out to sea and some of these are even moving into new england on their way toward the north but you can see how much uncertainty there is the entire western atlantic you know we don't know where the hurricane's going to be in 10 days within this whole zone and that's a that's a large amount of uncertainty and when you're talking about a 10-day forecast there's just really no guarantees that can be made like i said all we can really tell you is that the pattern doesn't really favor a drive west into the southeastern u.s florida gulf of mexico that much we can tell you but beyond that not a lot of detail this is the gfs ensemble showing a similar thing just to note that you know multiple models showing a similar growth in uncertainty here you can see the cloud of possible positions ranging from fast turn to slow turn and some of these turns do move into canada or get uncomfortably close to new england so something to keep an eye on in the back of your mind as you're watching the national hurricane center website over the next few days just to see if there's updates that show the storm getting too close for comfort but right now this is the five-day forecast and it's still you know north of puerto rico comfortably north of puerto rico by monday morning and certainly nowhere close to uh, the united states again something for the bahamas and turks and caicos to keep a wary eye on just in case the track shifts a little bit farther west before it makes a turn we don't know for sure yet uh with a you know a forecast six seven days out things can and do change so we'll keep an eye on it but right now we're thinking this will be a powerful hurricane and not directly impacting any land areas for the foreseeable future, but there is a chance for some elevated winds and certainly surf in the northeastern Caribbean. And in general, it's a good point to remember when you have strong hurricanes moving through the western Atlantic like this, all these land areas will see uh, very, very elevated surf, rip currents, big waves, uh, all that kind of stuff dangerous for coastal uh, dwellers so keep an eye out for that even if this stays out to sea and we'll hope it does uh, but there are some potential areas that could see impacts down the road so we'll keep an eye on the forecast and see how things evolve that's it for now thanks for watching